In this video, we're going to have a look in more detail about how memory caching works. Now, before we do, remember your powers of two. I'm going to be saying that a lot, but it's going to be very helpful for you to understand these as we do this topic. And uh, with that in mind, let's have a look at what our calculations depend on. Well, they depend on how much memory there is, or how big a block is, or how many big uh, blocks the cache can hold. So all of these are things that we need to be able to represent. For example, um, we need to know how many blocks there are because we need to understand how many bits we need to represent each block. So we need to give each block an address in the cache. Oh, sorry. And so we need to know how many blocks there are so we can figure that out. Similarly, how much memory there is. If there's two to the 32, that means we're using 32 bit addresses. Or if there's uh, two to the 16, that means we're using 16 bit addresses. And that's going to be very important for us as well as well as how big a block is, because we're doing byte addressability, uh, a number of bytes in a block is going to tell us uh, how many, for example, if we have 256, that's two to the power eight, that means we need eight bits of memory to represent uh, every single one of the bits in a block or bytes in a block, because we need to be able to address them individually. Uh, we should also be aware of different types of caching, though we will be sticking with direct map for most of this, but there is also fully associative and set associative caching. So let's have a look at some direct map caching. So in direct map caching, each block is mapped to one location in the cache. So that means each block has one location, we need to be able to represent that location. So for example, if we have 256 bytes, that is two to the power eight. So we're using eight bit addressing, that's total memory. So if we're using eight bit addressing, then memory addresses are eight bits. That's a shocking concept, but here we are. Now blocks are eight bytes each. So we need to be able to represent each block with a sort of address of its own. So we'll need eight or three bits to represent that because with three bits, we can represent eight different values and that's enough for us to represent each one of those blocks individually. Uh, the cache can hold eight blocks. Similarly, we'll need, uh, oh, sorry, I got those two mixed up. Um, we'll need three bits to represent the blocks in a, or the bytes in a block, but we'll also need three bits to represent the blocks in a cache. Um, this is because they both have eight different values and three bits can represent eight different values. So just by looking at this, we've figured out how many bits we need to represent each uh, byte in a block. And we've figured out how many bytes we need to represent the cat or the blocks in a cache. Now, because addresses are um, eight bits long and we've only used up six bits, we need to find out extra two bits. So let's have a look at the conventions for identifying these um, uh, bytes in a block. So addresses are split into three fields. So we have the tag where in mem main memory the block is for. And that's where those extra two bits that I was talking about go. Then we have the block index, the block location in the cache. So we said we needed three bits to represent this and we definitely do. That those three bits will be enough to tell us which block is which when it's in the cache. Then we have the offset, which is the position of the address inside the block. Now we had eight bytes in each block. And again, we said three bits are needed to represent that as well. So for the address AC, that comes from a tag of two, then an index of five and an offset of four. You can write that out and see that that gets you to the address AC, but that's how we label these. They just go to memories, our uh, memory locations in the end, or addresses. So it's useful to have an idea of how this decomposes. So it goes offset last, then the next bit is the block index and the first two bits or the most significant two bits are the tag. So let's have a look at some examples. Or, uh, yeah. So the address is made up of the tag, index and offset. And we split these up into the three fields. Um, but the tag tells us where in memory the block is from. This is stored in the cache with the block data, but it tells the cache where the block came from. So you might have like a for the tag might just represent say BA and then we know in main memory this came from a memory location that started with BA or something like that. Again, we'll see more examples of this um, in the next slide. I was a bit ahead of myself, but this is what you would use that for. And similarly, the block index, this is how we find the block in the cache. So once it's been moved to the cache, we need a way of identifying it and we need to use a sufficient number of bits to identify it so that we can get to it when we need to. And again, the offset that tells us where the data or how to find the data on the block is similar to the block index, but the offset just tells us where to go in there. Okay, so if we had 16 bit addressing, then and uh, we had a 256 byte block in the cache, then how would we figure out our offset? So 
let's think about this. Um, if we have 256 byte blocks, then we'll need 8 bits to represent each of the individual bytes within the block, or to address them. 2 to the power 8 is 256, so that's enough combinations for us to be able to identify each of the individual bytes in the block, so that's the offset size. Now we have 16 blocks, so that's going to be 2 to the power 4 if I'm getting my memory right, so we need 4 bits to represent each of the blocks in a cache. So that's our index size, so that's how we figure this stuff out. Then we need to make up a valid 16-bit address. We've used 12 bits so far, so we would use the final four for the tag size. So this is how I would recommend you finish, uh, find this out. Maybe start from the bottom up, figure out your offset, figure out your index size, and then you can figure out your tag size just by subtracting the bits you've used from the size of each address in this uh, setup. So let's have a look at an example. We have 32-bit addressing, that's 4 gigabytes worth of metamemory, because we can represent 2 to the 32 different uh, bytes, uh, or address 2 to the 32 different bytes, similar to MIPS. So, we have 256 64-byte blocks in the cache. So, if we have 64 bytes in the cache, then we'll need 2 to the power 6, or 6 bits, to represent 64 different combinations, because 64 is 2 to the 6. And so 6 bits will be sufficient to represent all of the possible different values stored there or to address them with unique maps or addresses. Next we have 256 as our index. Now 256 is 2 to the power 8. So we'll need 8 different or 8 bits to represent all 256 possible addresses for the index. Then finally we need to make up a 32-bit address. So We've used up 14, so the tag will be 18 to make up a valid 32-bit address. So our offset is 6, because that's how many we need to represent 64 different bytes. Then the index size is going to be 8, because that's how many bits we need to represent 256 blocks. And then the tag size is 18, because that's how many bits we need to use to make up the rest of the address. So, let's see how this works when we have uh, an address like this. That's uh, 50AD ED. Ah, you can read the word. <laughs> so what we do is we just convert this to binary and we put it into this block here. So that becomes this. Now, we don't ha always have, it doesn't always line up perfectly along word boundaries. Now that's okay. Um, but we just need to figure out what this is. So what are the tag, index and offset for five, or for this number under this um, caching convention? Well, the offset you can see here is one and then the next four bits represent, what is that, 12, so that'll be C. So this is going to be 1C. Next, the index, you can see this is split across a few words, but we have 1101, which is 14, which will be D. So we'll have something D. In fact, we'll have 4D here, because this is four from 0, 1, 0, 0. And then we have the D value here. So this is going to be 4D, this is going to be 1C. And then we have the tag to worry about, so we'll work from the, uh, so we can have a look and see where this splits. So there's going to be a word here, or a hex value here, another hex value here, and another hex value up to here, and then another hex value up to here. So we have this one at the start, which is by itself, so it's going to be one, and then this hex value is going to be four, and then the next hex value is going to be two, and then we'll have B, and then we'll have B. So that should be 142BB. So let's see if I got that right. Okay, so we managed to get it. So the tag is 142BB, the index is 4D, and the offset is 1C. So the trick is just to convert it to binary and then split it up based on what you've figured out the offset, index, and tag size are. And then it's fairly easy to figure out what your tag, index, and offset are, just converting back to hex. So let's have a look at another example. So suppose a computer has a, a computer is using a direct map cache has two to the twenty four bytes of byte addressable memory, and a cache of one hundred twenty eight blocks, each block containing one thousand and twenty four bytes. What are the sizes of the tag, block, index, and offset fields and memory address? So then we want to figure out what the offset fields for the address A A B B C C are. So let's figure this out. Well, we've got 24-bit addresses. That's what the 2 to the 24 tells us. Uh, if we have 2 to the 24 bytes of memory, then we have 24-bit addresses. 
and we have a cache of 128 blocks. So we'll need two to the power seven uh, uh, different values to represent all 128 of them. So that'll mean we need seven bits of memory. And then each block contains two to, uh, 1024. So what'll that be? I think that's two to the power 10, if I'm getting my maths right. So we'll need 10 bits to represent all of the different bytes in each block. So the offset will be 10, the index size will be seven, and the tag size will be 10 plus seven. So uh, 24 minus 10 plus seven, so that'll be seven. Let's see if I got that right. Ah, lucky me. So we'll figure out what the tag, the index, and uh, the offset are. So then we would need to split it up along uh, the different uh, bit, val bit values. And so you can see here, we just split it up 10 bits for the offset, and that goes in the lowest, uh, the least significant bits. Then you have the index of seven bits, and then you have a tag of seven bits. So reading this offset, we have a C value here, another C value here, and then we have a value of three. So this isn't a full word, but this is what this binary number represents here, this one one. Oops. So we have three CC. Then for the index, we split these up, so this section here, these four bits, give us the number E. You can tell us it's one short of F, that's the way I normally figure out E. Um, so we have an E here, and then we have 010, so that's going to be two, one in the twos column. And then we have uh, 0101, that's five, and then we have 101, and that's five as well. So we have tag of 50, or 55, index of 2E, and an offset of 3CC. So that's how you would figure out the tag, index, and offset. Um, it's relatively easy once you get the hang of it, but it's very handy to remember your powers of two to tackle this. I hope you found that you, this useful. That's everything I was planning to go over in this video. And uh, uh, if you have any questions about any of this, please do let me know. Thanks.